today doing this episode we want to talk about fly rods right for anybody who's interested in getting into fly fishing they're not really you know they're not seeing people with fly rods um, but they not, don't know too much about them right so one of the big misconceptions about fly fishing is that that it takes a lot of money to get into it it doesn't you can go out in one of the big box stores and you can get fly rods that comes with flies and line and everything you need for about 40 bucks going up depending on you know how much you want to spend um, it's windy and chimey today so this is a one weight fly rod you know, the weights have to do with the line right um, one weights, two weights, three weights, going all the way up to 12 weights, you know, 12 weights you get used for something like, you know, saltwater fishing for big reds and uh, other fish like that. One weights, the three weights is really good for a panfish, bluegills and stuff like that. Um, you have your fly rod. There's medium action, fast action rods. Um, basically just how it loads the line, right? Uh, a regular ride, you know, you chunk out there fly rod you don't do that a fly rod fly rod is that the rod bends right and it loads the line and then it bends back and it bends farts and it throws the line out right it it just flips the line out that's what fly fishing is um thing about fly fishing if you throw in 20 feet in front of you you also throw in 20 feet behind you so you always got to watch out for trees and people and stuff like that if you had parks um Fly rod, fly reels, reels usually come uh, mostly for small fish like panfish and stuff like that. You're really just using this for a line holder. You don't really any hook anything that's gonna uh, drag line out and stuff like that. All right, fly lines. There's floating lines and there's sinking lines, right? And most of the ones I use for freshwater, um, for brim like that is uh, what they call a forward action floating line which means that the line floats on the water and you throw out. There's a line, there's what's called the leader. Now the leader is basically just monofilament that's angled down, right? And it's designed to, to be weighted at the top and light at the, and lighter at the bottom to help you flip that line out. After you get past your leader, we use what we call tippet. Tippet is the same monofilament, except it's, it's, it's the same size, right? Um, this this system is set up with a one weight rod, one weight line. Uh, I think it's a, a three weight uh, leader and a three weight tippet. So it's designed for small fish. Now you can catch big fish with this rod. You just have to learn to fight the fish. You can't manhandle them. So a lot of people get that misconception that uh, I can't catch a, a two pound bass with a one weight rod. I need a bigger rod. Wrong. But the problem is, is that with these smaller rods, you have less control of the fish, right? So you can't manhandle them. So I have lost decent fish with this one weight rod because they get out of control and get around trees and stumps and stuff like that. Because like I said, you can't manhandle it. You probably break the rod. So that's basically, that's basically a setup. Now this, you can, this is max catch. This is one of my favorite economy brands right um max catch reel max catch rod max catch line um tip it in, in the leader something else but great little ride i think this ride would set you back about a, about a hundred bucks right which is which is really inexpensive when it comes to fly rides you go to some of the the, the other brands start with oh i won't say their name um, but you're gonna spend a lot more for a ride that an inexpensive ride can do the same exact thing now you do get what you pay for. Some of the more expensive rides cast better. They load line better. You know, that's just the way it is. So this is basically your, your setup for you. Now, I tie my own flies. This is what I call the bluegill bug fly. It's just a little, little buggy looking fly. Now, you can throw out and strip in or you can use a cart, right? So this is a strike indicator. <laughs> I used to always argue with my buddy and he called it a cart, but it is a cart, but fly fishing called the strike indicators. Because a lot of times you're fishing in shallow water and that fly is just bumping across rocks, especially if you're fishing up north, and this is going along. Now once a fish grabs it, it'll it'll go past the line and then it'll go underwater. That means that it's either stuck on a rock or a fish is holding the mouth, so you know you got it. Mm. Bluegill fishing down here. Louisiana, basically we use them just like carts. You throw out and if the cart goes under, you hook, set the hook. Now, 
that's another good thing, setting a hook with a fly rod. A lot of people think, you know, they get used like, like bass fishing or with a, with a mini cast and, you know, spin fishing like that. You don't. The fly rod set the hook, you basically just lift up on it. Because there's not really, these rods are so flexible, you can't really uh, manhandle and set the hook in these rides. It's basically you just lifting up and, and the, the pressure setting the hook in his mouth. Now, bass and some of the big fish, like redfish, sometimes that don't work because their mouth's a lot harder. So when you, when, you, when you go to set the hook, you pull towards you. You tighten up the line and then you pull towards you and it, it's that you get a good set, right? A good pull in their mouth and so it sets the hook better. But on bluegills, you don't do that. Bluegills and small fish like sackley and stuff like that, you just you want know, to lift up on the ride and set the hook. Um, another thing is tying the flies, right? A lot of people, um, a lot of people for the longest time, and I still do, I still, uh, I still do the fishermen's night. The first night my brother ever taught me fishing. And it's, you know, that's basically just a, we gonna call this a hook, this little pancake over there, and this is the line where you can see it better. And that's basically just the one where you spin the line, do 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 do, and then you you go back through the the loop right there. You come back through the loop, and you pull down, and it's the fisherman knot. This is a really good knot. This works on like jig heads, um, some of the other flies, um, streamers and stuff like that. It's a really good hook like that. But if you're using a fly and you want that fly to have more action, more live, like especially if you're fishing like a shad or a minnow and you want that to be, look like a hurt minnow, right? And, and be moving around, that knot don't work because it's locked down on that hook head and, and it's basically, all the action you get is this, uh, uh, you see what I mean? 